Yo, our one people, it's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Shut up, boy, holding it down for this man, Willis Raburu. Sasa wadao, last Wednesday was here with Daktari, tuliongelea ishu ya magal child. Na nikasema, because our magal child, unantumianga maswali sana, I will look for Daktari again, we discuss, uh, ishu pia ina, ina involve magal child sana, lakini pia maboy child, you need to be on the lookout, you need to have this information, di usaidia mtu mwingine. Sawa, sawa. Eh yeah. sasa leo ni tunataka kuongelea fibroids alright na niko na fibroids guru anajitaga hapo pale kwenye instagram <laughs> <laughs> sina other than dr angela nzeze daktari how are you today i'm very well thanks shata boy uko salama yeah, how have you been since last time i've been great ah, yeah i stalk you on instagram <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for following <laughs> religiously. <laughs> I see a lot of your works uh, on fibroids. Yes. And I thought, you know, this thing needs to be told on a larger scale. Yes. Because it, it's affecting a lot of people. You yes. Know? And Kwanza, uh, during this time, mm -hmm. imekuwa, almost kila, kila, mm. kila mdem ako na story. Yeah. They will, they will speak about fibroids. Yeah. So I keep, I, I keep wondering, is this a lifestyle thing? Yeah. Why was it not like this? The, uh, Yapo, you know? But before we get to that, let us start with introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, so my name is Dr. Angela Nzeze. I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist, primarily based in KNH, mm -hmm. but I also engage in private practice. All uh, right. Yes. Kabisa. Dr. Fibroids Nenini. So fibroids are non-cancerous uh, growths mm -hmm. that commonly occur on the uterus. Uh, actually, they occur on the uterus 100%. Mm -hmm. And um, they're very common in uh, women of reproductive age group. That means women who have not uh, reached menopause, women who are still capable of uh, having children, and women who are still menstruating. Mm -hmm. And that is because of the exposure of the hormones. Yes. All right. So just like I'd asked earlier, e story I zamani. Yeah. We didn't know about fibroids yes. uh, until recently. Yes. Is it that is it a lifestyle disease? What causes it? Uh, or yeah. or was it there that but people didn't know that it was there or didn't yeah. know the name for it? What would you say brings this? So commonly fibroids are caused by homo hormones. Eh? Mm -hmm. They are usually fed by hormones, primarily estrogen in the body. And uh, so that, that's why they're more common in women who are actively producing these hormones, meaning women who are still receiving their menses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so estrogen causes uh, growth of these hormones. And you'll find that they're common in uh, young women who've not had children um, because of that high exposure to estrogen. So that's why you've had people say that uh, for you to not get fibroids, mm -hmm. you need to have uh, many children or children early. Mm -hmm. you, uh, in quotes, keeping your uterus busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Because uh, when you've had that exposure for a long time uh, with the hormones, that's why they grow. Yes. All right. Before we continue, if you have any question on fibroids, this is your chance. Sawa sawa, uliza swali yako, what do you know about fibroids? Umwai kusikia nini ukwa mtani wakiongelea? Ehe, wewe kwa akili yako unafikiria ni nini? Uzo maswali ukwanaza kwa daktari, maybe you could be right now going through this thing. You have questions, today you can get your answers. Shwandiki SMS kwenye 2242, sawa sawa, ama kwenye mtandao, every at Citizen TV Kenya, ask your questions. Daktari will try to answer as many as we can before to malize show. Sindio, hashtag ni daybreak. SMS bila ni mewambia 2242. Maswali zikam. Sindio? Haya. So, Doc, you've said, you've said, uh, and, i, ni kitu ineza shika madem wale wako, bado wajafika menopause. Yes. Sindio? Yes. Na washafika level ya waneza pata mtoi. Yes. Sindio? Yes. So, will you say that is the bracket that is at risk of getting... Uh, fibroids, yes. or, and again, what other risk factors are there? Mm -hmm. Like, who would you say is at a risk of getting this thing? So that age group is at risk mm -hmm. uh, because they're actively producing estrogen. Remember, we said estrogen, high levels of high exposure of estrogen in your body for a long time yes. uh, causes these fibroids to grow. So women of reproductive age group, all women of reproductive age group are at risk, specifically those uh, who've uh, delayed having children or have not had children before. Yes, those are the 
the ones at highest risk. Another risk factor is, unfortunately, they're more common in black women. And unfortunately, I would tell you this, uh, about 80%, approximately 80% of women have fibroids. Some know, some don't know. And it's more common in our race, the black the African woman uh -huh. is at, is more at risk than the uh, other races. You just said 80%. Yeah. If I heard you right, 80%. Yes. 80% of women have fibroids. Some don't know, some, some know. know. Yeah. And you're saying it's prevalent on the black race. Yes. What could be the issue? There's no... Is it genetics? Um, commonly it's genetic. Uh, there's no really uh, exact reason why that's common, but it's also genetic. So you'll have, you'll have seen it in generations of families. So like if your mom ha had it, you're likely to have it, mm. or your sister, things like that, yeah. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, then if 80% of women have this, and you're saying others know, others don't know. Yes. Then you need to be on the lookout. Exactly. Okay? So what are the symptoms that you would see and yeah. know these this are fib fibroids because I, so, well stories you hear they are painful sometimes yeah. so you might go to hospital you you're in pain yeah. maybe you're bleeding and they will tell you it's it's then it's your normal cramping yeah. it's your menses maybe a misdiagnosis uh, of the issue what are the symptoms that one needs to look for you know when you see this you know now this one yeah. is not normal so sometimes they could be small uh, two three centimeters. In such cases, you may not experience symptoms. So some women don't actually know they have them because they may be so small that they won't feel anything. But in some instances, they may be big, mm -hmm. uh, like five centimeters and above. So those are the ones that now you may experience symptoms and you might not know, like this is uh, associated with fibroids. So the common symptoms of fibroids, uh, some people experience pain. Mm -hmm commonly during the periods. And uh, this pain may be very severe. Remember last time uh, when we were talking about menstrual health, we were talking about severe menstrual pain. Uh, and I said, that's not normal. Uh, any pain that is so severe that will prevent you like from carrying on with your usual activities, you know, going to work, um, things like that. That's not normal pain. And the number one cause of that, the most common cause of that is uh, uterine fibroids. They cause very severe menstrual pain. So if you have menstrual pain um, and you're listening to this, that's very severe, please reach out to us. Uh, you know, get an ultrasound down, done and have it checked because that's not normal. Mm. Another cause would be, uh, you know, they grow very big yes. and it can show. So you may feel, you may look, you may have uh, maybe f uh, like on your abdomen, you may f have like a swelling mm -hmm. or even like when you're exercising, that fat that just doesn't go away, that's below your belly. Right. That's, th they grow that big and uh, they may make you look pregnant. Uh -huh. So that's another symptom. Uh, okay. Growth, uh, overgrowth of your abdomen, that's not normal, especially when they're very big. Uh -huh. Yeah. Would you say then these fibroids affect your, men your menstrual cycle? They may affect your menstrual cycle, depending on your location. So another common symptom women experience is heavy bleeding, and uh, that depends on where they're located. So fibroids may be located on the inner part of your uterus, mm -hmm. uh, which is now where the baby normally implants, right. and, uh, or they may be located on the muscle, the middle part of your uterus, mm -hmm. or on the outer part of your uterus. So if they're located on the inner part of your uterus, uh, they may cause heavy bleeding, uh, unusual bleeding uh, that can even go on for weeks, months, and it can be very uncomfortable for the woman because uh, you can't be, you know, imagine yourself bleeding like every day for weeks, months. It can affect your daily lifestyle. It can affect even you going to work. Some people bleed so heavily. Uh, the bleeding may be very heavy. They may need to wear even two pads. So it's something that uh, can be very uh, uncomfortable for the woman. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you say you, you bleed heavily, yeah. you know, some people tend to say I, I have a, an, a, an irregular cycle. Yes. So how do you differentiate between a cycle, yeah. a menstrual cycle, and, yeah. and a bleed that is associated with fibroids? So a normal menstrual cycle uh, can go up to 21 on the lower side, 21 to 35 days. That's the whole cycle. But on average, women have their menstrual cycle at about 28 days. Mm -hmm. And when you get your menses, uh, when you menstruate, you menstruate for an average of five to seven days, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a normal uh, bleeding cycle. You menstruate for five to seven days, and the rest of your menstrual cycle 
uh, your, the rest of your cycle continues, meaning ovulation, mm -hmm. things like that. After you ovulate, then your body prepares itself to bleed again for another five to seven days like that. So that's a normal menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. Women on average bleed five to seven days. But in someone who has fibroids, uh, especially if they're located on the inner part of the uterus, this bleeding can be excessive and it can even go on for more than beyond even seven days. It can go on even for two weeks. It can go on continuously even for a month, even two months. Okay. Yeah. So that's how it affects your menstrual cycle. All right. So and this, this bleed, is it the fibers that are bleeding or do they affect your body to start bleeding? So just because of the nature of the location, uh, when they're located in the inner lining of the uterus, uh, so they tend to cause uh, some irritation there, they cause some inflammation, and uh, this produces substances that cause that heavy bleeding to come out, uh, yeah, okay. and severe pain in some cases. Well, you've, you've mentioned uh, pregnancy yeah. and fibroids, and you've said they grow big. So if they were there and you're pregnant, I'm yeah. sure there would be an issue. But before I get to that, mm -hmm. you've said, like you've given us the symptoms yeah. to look out for. Sindio. Yes. And you've, sometimes you've said others know, others don't know. Yes. Okay, you said maybe two, two centimeters is not that big. Yeah. So when is it time to go to hospital to get checked? When, when do you say now this is an issue? This is not something I can overlook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So usually it's advised, uh, even when you're not sick, just go for your usual checkup, uh, wellness woman checkup, where various tests are done, and one of them is an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. uh, so an ultrasound will show, even if you don't have symptoms, just go for your checkup. The ultrasound will show uh, if you have fibroids, and if you do, it will tell us the location and the size. And it will also show us, is this fibroid associated with other things, uh, like ovarian cysts and things like that. So number one, even if you don't have symptoms, you're encouraged to you know, just come for your regular checkup. Now the other symptoms that will also prompt you, like this is now like time, like I need to go uh, see my doctor, is now when you have, uh, when they're growing very big, the, you remember the uterus is surrounded by other structures, okay? Mm -hmm. It's surrounded by your bladder in front and it's surrounded by uh, like your rectum behind. Mm -hmm. So when they grow big, they cause pressure on those surrounding structures and uh, it may affect uh, how you pass urine, for example. So it might compress your bladder so much that uh, you may get difficulty passing urine. You know, you feel like you have a commonly people say they feel like they have a urinary tract infection, but it's not actually a UTI, it's actually fibroids. Some people, uh, if it's so big, they compress now their rectum behind and they get constipation. So those are the common symptoms to look out for. So when you have those things, if you have heavy menstrual bleeding, if you have severe pain during your periods, if you have uh, um, unusual symptoms uh, um, like uh, heavy bleeding, things like that, it's good to get checked. Mm. Yes. And how do, how do they get diagnosed? So ultrasound is uh, the best way to diagnose them. Mm -hmm. When you come to the doctor, we also do a general examination mm -hmm. uh, because heavy bleeding affects also your general system. So we'll check, uh, do you have signs of anemia? Anemia is because you've lost so much blood that you become anemic. So we'll check things like that. We'll check your, uh, you know, vital, like your blood pressure. Is it affecting your general system? Uh, and then we do an abdominal examination. When you do an abdominal examination, we'll be able to feel, uh, if they're very big, we'll be able to feel them. Mm -hmm. And then now eventually we send you for an ultrasound and then discuss uh, the treatment options. All right. Yes. Now you've brought me to the treatment part of it. Yes. What options do I have? Like w w w when I've come uh, to hospital, yeah. I'm a lady, and you've diagnosed, you've said, you know what, you have fibroids, okay? What are the treatment methods? So it depends. Uh, how do you treat them as well? Okay. So we divide uh, women with fibroids into two categories. Those who've uh, achieved their desired family size, meaning like they've had enough children and they don't want to have any more children. And then there are those who have fibroids and they've never had children before. So those who've never had children before and uh, they have very big fibroids and they're causing all those symptoms and maybe they're also trying uh, to have children uh, at that point. So if they're very big and they're causing those symptoms, we recommend surgery. 
removal of the fibroids only. Yeah, this is in women who want to have kids All right. uh, at some point. Mm -hmm. They're trying to have kids at, the, at some point. So once you remove the fibroids, you treat the symptoms, and thereafter, they'll be able to conceive. Okay. And uh, those who've uh, achieved their desired family size, meaning they've had enough children and they're like, I'm done, I don't want any more kids, instead of removing the fibroids, because they're the main source of the problem at that point, we recommend removal of the uterus, uh, meaning hysterectomy. So when you do a hysterectomy, when you remove the uterus, you remove the fibroids and they'll never have those symptoms ever again. Mm. And, but this is a, in a woman who's decided like they don't want any more children. So you, that's how you permanently treat uh, those fibroids. And by removing the uterus, it prevents you from having uh, cancers in the future. Mm. Things like cervical cancer, even uh, cancer of the uterus itself. Yeah. So that's a permanent treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds uh, well, scary and too much, true. but uh, yeah. That's, that's what we usually recommend. Yeah. Now, if uh, some women will come, maybe they didn't know they had them, it was just found incidentally on ultrasound and they're small. Mm -hmm. Those ones we recommend, you know, uh, things like diet, mm -hmm. uh, weight loss. So reduce, you know, basically eat healthy, reduce the amount of uh, maybe junk food, if you take a lot of junk food, mm -hmm. reduce your junk food intake, uh, fat intake, you know, eat healthy, have a balanced diet, because sometimes uh, it's been shown that they also grow in response to like how you're eating. So eat healthy, weight loss, exercise, and uh, that prevents them from growing too big. So once uh, from there, if they're small, we just tell you, you know, come every regularly for your checkups and we'll do ultrasounds to check if they're growing. Right. And if they're growing, then we recommend those options. If they're not growing, it's okay. We'll just continue treating your symptoms as we monitor their growth. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, but I'm sure that all <laughs> the, the removal of the removal. <laughs> Well, the uterus <laughs> is not an easy option. Well, even bringing it up. Uh, yeah. Um, do, do you get cases where people come in denial? Where, yes. Uh, like, mm -mm, you are misdiagnosing me. This is not it. I can't have this. I'm too young for this. Yeah. Or, or I, I'm too old for this. I've lived my entire life. Why would Why I have would... my children? Why would I have this now? Yeah. Do you get such cases? I've had quite a number of cases, um, especially those who didn't know. And mm. then, you know, you just find them by surprise. Mm. So it takes time to accept uh, that you have something like that. Mm. It takes time to accept. Uh, you know, as, and fibroids are also um, not talked about very well, especially in our community That's because true. of issues of uh, infertility. Mm -hmm. But uh, they don't always cause infertility. And uh, if you're watching this and you have fibroids, I want to tell you not to worry because uh, it's treatable. Uh, these are, it's a condition that can be treated and, uh, you know, once you have the surgery, you, you're, you, you're relieved of those symptoms and you can even conceive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not an easy thing. Um, that's, that's very true. But uh, once you come, you know, we talk to you, I counsel you and uh, we go through it step by step. And uh, with time, once you accept, you're okay. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to talk about now pregnancy and fibroids yeah but after you've treated after after one is treated yes what are the things they need to do to avoid a, a recurrence or is there a possibility of a recurrence yes uh thank you for bringing that up so yes there's a possibility of recurrence mm -hmm. once uh, you have your fibroids removed uh, we recommend, um, if possible, that you conceive within at least a period of one to three years. Pardon? If you've had fibroids, mm -hmm. if you have fibroids and you've had them removed, we recommend that you con uh, conceive within at least a period of one to three years. All right. Because they recur. Mm -hmm. uh, in some women, they do recur. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, let's say, you've come because uh, you're seeking uh, treatment for fertility, for example, because they affect your fertility, mm -hmm. uh, we recommend at least you should conceive within that period because of recurrence. So, yes, they do recur. But this is, this, this, this conceiving part has to be uh, doctor guided because yes. I'm assuming there's been a surgery here. Yes. You know? So, when do you wait, how long do you wait for the wounds to heal? after the surgery yeah. for you not to know 
you are okay, ready to conceive? Yeah, so for my patients, mm -hmm. um, I usually tell them once we do the surgery uh, and you're okay after the surgery, you come back after six months. Okay. After six months, now we start planning for the pregnancy. We do what is called preconception care. Preconception care is just preparation for pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then now that's when they're recommended to now start trying to conceive. What does it entail? Preconception care. Yeah. So we do those tests. Uh, tests uh, like uh, maybe we check your blood sugar, basically to assess your ability to uh, have this child and have a successful pregnancy. So we check your blood pressure, I mean your blood sugars, we check uh, your hormone levels, things like thyroid, you know, anything that can affect your fertility. Mm -hmm. We do ultrasound checkup again to see if there's anything in your uterus that may also prevent you uh, from conceiving. And we put you on supplements as well, mm -hmm. mostly folic acid. Um, folic acid uh, prepares you um, for pregnancy and also helps with the baby uh, in the early stages of development. So those are the things we do for preconception care. All right. Yes. Now let's talk about the after the conception now. Yes. Do you can you get pregnant with fibro fibroids like you had them? Yes. You didn't know. Yeah. And you got pregnant. Yes, it's very possible. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. So okay, these are two questions. I want to divide it in two. Yeah. Number 1 you got pregnant, uh, you got pregnant while having fibroids, yeah. unknowingly or knowingly, yeah. okay? And there's a case where you are pregnant and now they grow. Mm -hmm. Is it also a possibility? Yes. Uh, and, and if they are this big, do they fight for space with the child? Yeah. So, okay, let, let's talk about that. Okay. Those are three questions in one. <laughs> <laughs> sour, sour. So yes, it's possible to conceive with fibroids. Fibroids don't necessarily, not, they don't always um, affect that possibility. Mm -hmm. It depends on where they're located. So if they're the, in the inner lining of the uterus, mm -hmm. the inside of the uterus, that might decrease your chance of conceiving. Those are the ones that commonly cause infertility. But there are some that are in the middle part of the uterus or even on the outside of the uterus those ones don't directly affect your fertility. And some women have actually conceived with fibroids uh, of that nature. I've had a couple of patients uh, who've come to me with fibroids in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So once you conceive, that is automatically considered a high-risk pregnancy. Uh, not to scare anyone with fibroids at home uh, or fibroids with pregnancy. It's mm -hmm. just, it means that you need special care, um, you know, special continuous care. Uh, so yes, you can conceive with fibroids in pregnancy. So what happens when you have uh, fibroids uh, with pregnancy? Because of the increased hormone production in pregnancy in itself, uh, they tend to grow bigger in some women, in others they don't. Sometimes they cause very severe pain in pregnancy. That pain in pregnancy is usually, it's it's more even when you're not pregnant. And that, that's because of the changes that occur on the fibroids itself with pregnancy. And that's in response to the hormones that are produced in pregnancy. Remember, pregnancy is like a hormonal state, a very high hormonal state. And this uh, makes the fibroids grow and it can uh, cause them to have very pain just because of those changes. Mm -hmm. So once you have fibroids with pregnancy, you're followed up through and through. And if you have that kind of severe pain, you're given medication throughout pregnancy. Now, one thing to note is they're not removed during pregnancy. If you have fibroids in pregnancy, we see you till the end of the pregnancy. Once you deliver, that's when now we start uh, treating the fibroid itself. Because when you remove them during pregnancy, it puts the mother at risk of uh, heavy bleeding that's fatal. Mm -hmm. And it, this can also affect the baby. So we don't do surgery for fibroids during pregnancy. They're treated after pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So the only thing we treat during pregnancy is the pain, which may be very severe. So if you have fibroids and you're sitting at home and you have that severe pain, uh, you know, seek help, uh, reach out, and uh, that's something that can be managed even in hospital, um, yeah, with painkillers as we monitor your status and the baby. Another, the other question you asked was, uh, how does it affect the pregnancy? Um, so the number one complication of, the most common complication of fibroids in pregnancy is uh, depending again on the location, depending on the size. In some women, they may cause miscarriage. 
yeah commonly in the second trimester meaning after three months after three months exactly so the second trimester uh, so some women unfortunately experience uh, pregnancy loss at that time mm -hmm. yeah Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Another complication with they may be you asked about something about displacing the baby. Yes. That's very possible. Because they, mm -hmm. you said they can grow to, you said fourteen centimeters? Even yeah, even up to that size. <laughs> so I'm assuming if you're pregnant yeah. and and you have this size of fibroids. Yeah. Clearly, there is a big problem yeah. for the baby as well. The, yes. the baby can be displaced. Yes. So in such a situation, you said there is no surgery that can be done during yes. pregnancy. Yes. So how do you treat the how do you treat the fibroids then? Yeah. So in that case, uh, if they're very big, uh, what they commonly do is uh, they may you know the baby is supposed to be in a particular position at a particular time. Right. So for example, in late pregnancy, when you're about to deliver, the baby's head should be facing down in a particular position preparation in preparation for delivery. delivery but when you have fibroids you know things are in the way you know the baby doesn't have space the fibroids are interfering with you know the baby's well-being and position and things like that so the baby might be slightly displaced the position might be slightly displaced and this may affect uh, how the mother is going to deliver yeah you know, it might be slightly displaced in the sense that maybe instead of the head being down, it, be, it may be up or, uh, you know, not the right position for the baby to be delivered normally. So this uh, uh, positioning, abnormal positioning of the baby caused by the fibroids may uh, predispose the mother to having a cesarean section delivery just because of that. Yeah. Another thing, if the fibroids are uh, in the way of the bath outlet, uh, remember the bath outlet needs to have a clear way for the baby to pass. So some fibroids may be just low uh, in the uterus where the baby normally passes out. Mm -hmm. So in that case, if they're in the way, that means the labor, the, baby, the baby's way is obstructed. Mm -hmm. And uh, that necessitates a cesarean section because you can't have a normal delivery with that. True. Yes. And that cesarean does not affect the fibroids? Or the, you deal with the pregnancy alone? You deal with the pregnancy alone. So when you're doing the cesarean section, you don't interfere with the fibroids. We don't interfere with the fibroids. Mm. We deliver the baby. And uh, after that, once you're healed, we ask you to come back later. Now we sort out the fibroids. All right. Yeah. I have so many questions <laughs> in my head right now. I can imagine. But uh, we also have two questions from people that are yeah. watching from home because we did tell them to ask us their questions yeah. to get an opportunity to, uh, to get a response. So, watching from home, what are your thoughts on fibroids? Do you know anything about fibroids? Do you have any questions? So, Ibra wa Kibra, ni pesu wali ya kwanza. Aya, nyuma yangu, unanipoteza. Aya, I have to move. First question, purity from Sultan Hamoud. Ma, yo. Okay. I was diagnosed with fibroids since 2009, and the largest is six centimeters. They are not painful, no heavy bleeding, but I can't conceive. My periods are very irregular, but light. I'm 45 years old with one kid. Kindly advise me. This is the first question to Chukweka Matatu, Dr. Ajibu Zote. Does fibroids prevent conceiving? Second question. How would I know I have fibroids? Third. Pews from Earth River. Can family planning be a cause of uh, fi fibroids problem? All right. Is there any need to remove fibroids since they regrow? To Jibu Kwanza Izo Ibra Love to Rudyama? Yes, yes, let's answer. Those are five questions. Okay. Let's answer those ones, then we take the rest. So, where do I start from? I think uh, we'll start with the first one. The first question. Yes. So, the first question was a 45 year old, uh, she was called Purity. Yes. Um, so, what normally happens, Purity, if. Uh, so when fibroids grow that big, mm -hmm. they can't co af affect your ability to conceive. Yes. And already if you're having irregular periods, that means there's some hormonal imbalance um, going on. So I'd advise you, Purity, that you come uh, reach out to us, get checked. 
have an ultrasound checked. I mean, since 2009 up to now, it means they've grown very, they could have grown very big. That's uh, many years from now. So it's good to maybe do a repeat ultrasound check, have they grown, their location, and uh, this will also tell us why uh, the ability to conceive is being affected. Mm -hmm. However, also with age, uh, as you get older, especially above the age of 40, your menstrual cycle uh, may be affected by the hormonal imbalance that comes to age, uh, comes with age, and uh, that could explain the irregular period. So the status of her ovaries and her hormonal levels mm -hmm. generally needs to be checked. But uh, not to worry, um, once she reaches out for help, these are problems that can be, you know, solved. All right. Yes. But she, I, I, when they are not painful, yeah, is it something you'd live with just because they are not painful? It depends uh, on uh, how, what you want at that point. If mm. you're not planning to conceive, if they're not painful, if they're not growing, if they're not causing any symptoms, you can, um, you know, live with them and monitor the growth. If okay. you're not keen on, you know, having any surgery at that point. Okay. Yeah. All right. Second question. I look, uh, wait. Does fibroids prevent conceiving? Yes, they do. It depends on the location. Uh, remember we said uh, if they're in the inner lining of the uterus, mm -hmm. uh, that can affect your ability to conceive because basically they're in the way. Mm. They're in the way of where the baby is normally mm. implants the baby implants in the inside of the uterus. Mm -hmm. So if they're there, they're in the way. So that can delay your chances, uh, reduce your chances, yes. and definitely affect your fertility. So you could think yourself infertile, but in reality, it is fibroids it that is are fibroids. preventing you. Yes. So when you go, say, maybe for a fertility test, yeah. that is the first thing they should yes. be checking. Yes. Oh, that, that's interesting. I yes. don't think people know that. Yeah. All right. Third question, Ibra. How would I know I have fibroids? This, that's basically symptoms. Yes, the uh, symptoms we talked about, things like severe pain during your periods, pressure symptoms on your bladder or on your uh, rectum causing constipation, heavy bleeding, um, and if they're very big, you can see them growing or you can feel them. All right. Uh, someone had asked also about family planning. Yeah. Would, this, uh, would family planning bring fibroids? No. Uh, Pills have not been shown to cause fibroids. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Or any fa any other family planning method of that matter. Mm -hmm. They they don't directly cause fibroids. No, it's just the hormonal excess in your body, commonly mm -hmm. due to estrogen. Ah. Yes. All right. I will not get into genetics because you said <laughs> it's a black race thing. Okay. Let's take more questions. Yeah. Ibra. Ah, yeah. Can family planning be a cause of fibrous problems? That one we have answered. Yes. The in Guinea, that was pews from Mati River. Mambua family planning, I was equal effect. Aye. Is there any need to remove fibroids since they regrow? This one is asking yeah. about the, I would call it a relapse. Yeah. You know, so what do you do? Yeah. Do you now go remove them knowing that they will grow again? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that one? So they don't, maybe I can answer that. Okay. What are the signs and symptoms of fibroids? We've tackled that one, but we can, for, this, for the benefit of the viewer, we can yeah. also t tackle it again. So we have two. Okay. Ibratu Jibu is Kwanza. Ah, yeah. So, yes, uh, it depends on, uh, at that point, if you have fibroids, if you're diagnosed with fibroids and uh, you have those very bad symptoms and it's unbearable and maybe you're, you're bleeding heavily and, you know, it's just interfering with your life, mm -hmm. then at that point you need to consider removal because if they're already big, that means they continue as time goes by, it means they continue to grow and grow and they may get bigger. Okay. So even if there's that chance of uh, growing back even after removal, if you have those severe symptoms, we recommend treatment uh, at that point. And not always, in some women they grow back, in others they don't. And uh, this time span of growth is at least on average three years. Yeah, and even if they grow back, they may not be as you know, as big or having those severe symptoms as before. So, yeah, they, All right. they don't always grow back. Okay. So then what are the chances, like would you say a percentage mm -hmm. of, of regrowing or a relapse? 
Yeah. Uh, would you say it's a common thing or it's an abnormally? It's one instance over here that they it's came a, back. It's a common thing. Yeah. It's a common thing. I'd say like approximately 50%. They'd come back. They'd come back with right. uh, the. And what do you do then to prevent them from coming back? <laughs> Unfortunately, there's. Well, you can maybe lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. So eating healthy. Yes. exercises. Unfortunately, fibroids are not, you cannot really control them. You cannot uh, prevent yourself directly from having uh, them grow back again. But things like diet, lifestyle change, if you're, you know, overweight, you can lose weight, uh, eat healthy, things like that, that may prevent them from uh, growing bigger or recurring. All right. And also at least conceiving. Mm. Yeah, when you conceive, you give your uterus some space and time. Okay. So, say, how would you know if these fibroids are shrinking? You, maybe you've, you've not had <laughs> surgery. Yeah. You've been with these uh, fibroids. Would you know if they started shrinking? If, say they had grown to, mm. say, six centimeters. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to know that the only... shrinking now or getting big? Yeah. So, the only way you'd be able to monitor their growth is uh, by doing ultrasounds. So once you've been diagnosed with fibroids, it's mm -hmm. good to have regular checkups with your gynecologist uh, and, you know, check if they're growing or, yeah, mo basically monitor their growth. Mm. Yeah. All right. Let's take more questions. Ibra, cheza kiwewe. All right. Karimi, nasema thanks for the topic on fibroids. Once diagnosed, what would you advise to reduce further growth? Yeah. That's one. Rose, does sporting mean that I have fibroids at my age? I'm 46 years old. The last one, uh, is it true that fibroids come from prostitution? <laughs> okay, Breed, the other question, listening from Comarok, do men also get fibroids? Because some complain about back pain. <laughs> what could be the problem? So, we have, okay. Yeah, so men do not get fibroids. Fibroids are only common. Uterine fibroids are only common in women because only women have a uterus, uh -huh. and that's where they grow. All right. Yes. So, Mtuangwa Koma, the back problem is a problem, but it is not fibroids related. So maybe you can go to hospital. Yeah. Sindio? Hiya, there was that one. Kuna mungina liuliza, is it from prostitution? No, it's not from prostitution. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't know. I've never heard that myth before. Uh -huh. That's the first time I'm hearing a myth like that. <laughs> but no, it's right. absolutely not from okay. prostitution. So, uh, there was a 46-year-old that was asking if sporting is a sign of uh, fibroids. fibroids. It could be a sign of fibroids, again, depending on their location. Mm -hmm. But uh, for someone like that, I would also advise that she you know, uh, goes for a checkup. Uh, find out other causes of spotting. You know, you can have uh, maybe hormonal imbalance, you can have uh, infections on your cervix that cause that spotting, or even it's good to get screening for uh, cervical cancer, get a pap smear done, mm -hmm. uh, do a full evaluation to find out why you're spotting. It could not be only because of fibroids, but also something else. All right. Yeah. So she said, would you spot without pregnancy? Yes, you would spot without pregnancy. And it's not your the, the mental, uh, menstrual cycle? Yes, you can spot in between your bleeding. Mm -hmm. uh, that, like I said, because of infections, uh, maybe something on the cervix mm -hmm. uh, that needs to be checked by a pap smear. Mm -hmm. Or if you're taking some hormonal contraceptives, that can give you that imbalance in your body mm -hmm. and it can cause you to spot. Is it something that needs to be checked out immediately? Yes. Once you realize actually I'm yeah. spotting? If you're spotting in between your periods, that's not normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Just come for checkup. Uh, I mean, go for checkup. You can be evaluated and whatever it is, if found, uh, it can be treated. Yeah. All right. Now, my camera guy here is called Ombese. He's <laughs> <laughs> asked me a question here. Yeah. It's a myth. That people, uh, you know, if you, even the Bible says my people perish for the lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. people have weird ways of treating things, you know. So someone would say, yeah, I, I have fibroids, I'll start fasting. You know, <laughs> if I fast, 
they'll shrink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there are things like that that people are doing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would help? Say, there's a myth that if I well, started fasting today, mm. I would shrink them. <laughs> I don't want to go much into spiritual matters, uh -huh. but uh, if you're talking scientifically, mm. uh, things like diet, weight loss, lifestyle change may reduce uh, their growth or reduce your risks of having fibroids. Mm -hmm. But fasting on its own, I can't really, there's no direct link. Okay. Yeah. So you're denying yourself food. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the body, obviously, you, there will be weight loss. Yeah. You know, a mother is just hurting yourself for no reason. Denying yourself food may also affect uh, other parts of the body. Other parts of the body other and also your nutrients. You know, you're not getting enough nutrients. All so right. what's recommended is just eat healthy mm -hmm. and exercise and weight loss, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Another question would be then, are they her hereditary? Will it be passed from generation to generation? Yes. Remember we said uh, it's genetic and it's common in African women. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, it's hereditary. Uh, right. I've seen, um, you know, women who, like, let's say their mom had it mm -hmm. and then they have it or their daughters have it. All right. Yeah, so it's actually passed on, or your sisters. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> but they will, it will not show until you're... Uh, I'd say 18 and above? Yeah, commonly the ones I've seen are 18 and above. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's amazing. Uh, that's good to note. So if it, there's been an, a history of fibroids in the family, yeah. it's, it's important for you to get checked even without symptoms, yes? Yes. Sindio? Yes. Because it's better to treat them early yeah. than waiting when it's now an issue. Yeah. Sindio? Um, about the 18, you can have them earlier on before that, but you might not know. True. Yeah, and most women who come visit the gynecologist are usually way older. Mm -hmm. So by the time they're coming, they're above 18, okay. but you may have them earlier. Ah. Yeah. Okay, you said this thing tends to happen to you before menopause. Yes, commonly before menopause. Before menopause. Is it possible to have them after menopause? They can, if you had them before menopause, mm -hmm and you, maybe you didn't treat them and they were just there mm -hmm. and uh, you continued with, uh, with having them, they can't persist even after menopause. I've had patients who've had fibroids mm -hmm. after menopause and uh, in such cases we remove the uterus because at that point they, they're not planning to conceive, they're already menopausal and they're having those symptoms. Okay. Yeah. So you can have, if you had them before and they persist and you reach menopause, they may still persist. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. So as we wind up, yeah. a quick recap on what we've said yes. on fibroids. One, they're treatable. Yes. Okay. There are other ways to treat before we get to, say if you're pregnant yeah. and you have fibroids, there are other ways to treat before surgery. Yes. Uh, now that you've brought that up, another option, there's some medications you can give to suppress the hormones that uh, feed those fibroids. Um, there's an injection, a hormonal injection that can be given in women who have very big fibroids and who are preparing to have surgery. Sometimes they may be very big and you know, going to surgery with such big fibroids may cause severe blood loss and you know, it can be uh, harmful to the patient. Mm -hmm. So we recommend that you maybe have that injection first so that they reduce in size. Okay. Yeah, so that's another treatment option uh, that I normally discuss with my patients. Okay, yeah. and the injection does not affect the pregnancy? It, uh, no, it's given when you're not pregnant. Okay. Um, but it's because it's very high dose hormone, it has those side effects. Uh, okay. Yeah, it has certain side effects that may not be very bearable mm -hmm. and uh, some patients don't even get to finish uh, okay. the whole dose because of those side effects. Mm. Yeah. What would you classify as the first symptom that if you saw today, the next step should be at your doctor's uh, door? Severe menstrual pain. Mm -hmm. Severe menstrual pain and heavy bleeding. Those two, mm -hmm. yeah. But you see, when you say severe uh, menstrual, uh, menstrual pain, mm -hmm. people would think, but it's cramping. When you yeah. cramp, there is pain. 
you know and you maybe you be uh, for, for men actually you, your your partner would be telling you you know i, I, I mean so much pain and you're like oh, wait yeah. six grams yeah how do you know this is beyond cramping so there's yeah. normal cramping mm -hmm. you're able to you know go on with your daily life go to work exercise you know um, things like that but there's that cramping that stops your life mm. like you can't leave bed you're sick you're too sick to go to work you're too sick to perform your usual like daily activities like it just stops you from doing what you normally do so in such cases that's not normal yeah okay. like on a scale of one to ten if your cramping is above seven mm -hmm. yeah okay you did mention that uh, this uh, uh, fibroids can cause uh, bloating yes bloating and constipation mm -hmm. So that is something also that mm. you need to, to say. It's on a regular now. You, 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 stay, you stay bloated for a long time mm. or, or does it come going? It comes and goes, but it's also uh, persistent for a long time. Okay. Like you've had like bloating for maybe a month consistently. Mm -hmm. Just an, an example, but it's also on and off. Uh -huh. Yeah, like you're not bloated throughout the day, but it will. Come and on go. and off, yeah. But it has become a norm. Yeah, it has become a norm. Or constipation, okay. or uh, you feel like uh, you have a UTI, like you're diff uh, difficult in passing urine, mm -hmm. and most women can mistake that for a UTI. And some are even treated for UTI. Okay. They're not checked, and uh, little did they know they had fibroids that are causing that. Okay. Yeah. So those are called pressure symptoms. All right. Yeah. Sour, sour. And heavy bleeding. Those are things to look out for. So, uh, yeah. Heavy bleeding is, we say, when it's beyond seven days. When it's beyond seven days, very heavy, like within an hour you're changing a pad. Okay. You know, it's full. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And it's prolonged like that. Sawa so, sawa. Uh, mm. Santa sana daktari. I hope wale mkonyumbani, mumepata mawaitha. If you've been grappling with these issues, at least I hope now you have answers. And if you need to go checked, please get checked. There's nothing to worry about. Daktari amesema unatibiwa na unaishi maishi ya kawaida. Sindio? Na mesema it's a common occurrence to the girl child, sana sana mu Africa. Mm -hmm. So, niki to sijiambia this an isolated case, ama I'll hide myself mm -hmm. because of stigma and things like that. Because, you know, stigma is real. Yeah, stigma you, is real. You know, you'd be like, huh? Yeah. You want to tell people yeah. there's shame in it, but yeah. there should not be shame in it. Gonjo ni ugonjwa, na siyo umejitaftia, mesikiata ni hereditary. Meza kwa tuiko familia inakuwa. So go get checked if you've been having these issues. Sawa sawa, because we want a healthy you. For tomorrow, kutana mimi tukipika. Sawa sawa, aya, before to end, Daktari, where do we get you? So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Dr. Anzeze. Okay. All the platforms, Dr. Anzeze. Anzeze is A-N-Z-E-Z-E. -Z -E. Yes. All right. When do follow Daktari? Kamu kuna swali uja uliza, slide upon the DMs. Do you answer DMs? Do you respond to DMs? Yes, I respond to DMs, <laughs> especially on a topic like this that I like to create awareness about. You're right. encouraged to ask me questions. Mm -hmm. I know we've not been able to cover everything in sh such a short time. It's such a wide topic, but mm -hmm. feel free to ask your questions right. and we'll get back to you. You should check Instagram sana sana. Yes. Do you get shocked yeah. by these things you do? Like there's a day you posted, uh, uh, you da you had just done surgery, yes, and you removed fibroids, yeah, and they looked big. Yeah, they were very big. Uh -huh. Do you get do you get shocked while at it? No, I, used it I'm used to it now. I've seen very many patients with fibroids. I've operated on many patients, so to me, it's a it's a thing I do on a almost a daily. All right. Yeah. Uh, what would you say the success rate for the removal of? Fibroids. You mean after uh, for conceiving or success yes. success rate of the surgery? For, of the surgery. Success rate it depends on how big the fibroids are and the extent. Uh -huh. uh, in some instances, you may get incidences of heavy bleeding, but those are things that can be controlled. Okay. Uh, yeah, but removal of fibroids is generally a successful surgery. Uh -huh. Yeah, patients recover well. And you know, they're able to go on with their daily lives and conceive thereafter. Right. Mm -hmm. conceiving, sana sana. What would you say is the rate, like after the removal of fibroids, and maybe the one could not conceive? 
So it depends. Uh, there are also other factors that come into place. Uh, things like age, okay. um, other situations that may not uh, be associated with the fibroids mm. that are also causing the infertility. All right. But if it's just the fibroids, mm. the success rate is high. They that can't conceive. Uh, Santa Sana Daktari for coming through. Once again, social media handles? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Dr. Anzeze. Kabisa. <laughs> More fire. Facebook, Tafuta, uh, why are you saying Ibra, I can't hear you? Okay, here. <laughs> Make sure to follow Willis Raburu everywhere. Oh, congratulations, Buzz. Ah, Ivy, congratulations. All right? Follow Willis Raburu everywhere and also Unifollow. Shatter Boy, Instagram. Shatter Tiki Taka Twitter. Shatter Boy, Facebook. Na YouTube, Shatter Boy, Steve Jacob Maunda. Big up, Kilamdo Mekwa Luok in Konye Show. We meet tomorrow as we cook. Sawa sawa, more fire. Thank you for tuning in. See ya. More life. <laughs>